The War of the Roses is what happens when you let George R. R. Martin write real world history. Our story begins with England and France already a hundred years deep into a classic medieval slap fight, where England's king decides to make everything worse by bypassing his still very much alive sons to make his grandson king instead. Henry IV of House Lancaster calls BS and takes the throne in 1399, much to the annoyance of House York. Then a couple Henrys later, King Henry VI blows England's lead and loses the Hundred Years' War, so the Yorkies sweep in to take the reins as Lord Protectors. The Lancasters aren't thrilled about this power grab, so they kick the Yorkies out of court and then proceed to get trashed by them at the Battle of St. Albans in 1455. This changes the game from convoluted backroom palace drama to full-on civil war mode. Advisors switch sides, nobles and royals drop into and out of exile like it's a semester abroad, and battles erupt all across the English countryside. Several stabbings later, the now clinically insane Henry VI works out a compromise deal for peace with the Yorks and formalized a royal succession, but all of that goes out the window when the Yorks decisively kick their asses in 1471 and take the crown for keeps. This unfortunately goes south when the York King Edward dies because it turns out all of his kids are illegitimate due to his chronic condition of having a secret wife, so the kids get locked in jail and mysteriously disappear forever. Convenient. Another York crowns himself king, but a Lancaster rolls into England with a French army to swipe the crown and declare himself Henry VII. Then he ends the war for good by marrying a York, uniting their families under the new royal house of Tudor. After over a century of crown shuffling, three decades of open war, a dozen major battles, and a much more satisfying ending than Game of Thrones. Whew.